Hey, welcome back. I am Adam of the Wall Twins and today I want to do something just a little bit different. Recently I had somebody reach out to me and say, hey, how do you clean your Blackstone? I know there's a lot of videos out there and a lot of people profess that there's a specific exact way you got to clean your griddle top. It's not an exact science. One thing I love about my Blackstone is with this cold rolled steel, it's kind of hard to mess up, even in cleaning. The one thing you want to avoid is soap. But I want to get into that, so if that's something that will help you out, then go ahead and stick around while I clean up. I can't believe the Wall Twins. They're right there. That's one of them. That's the I'm other the one. one. I'm the, the other one. The cold rolled steel on the Blackstone griddle and most griddle tops, it seems like it's a little bit high maintenance. You got to season it. You got to maintain that seasoning. Make sure you get that non-stick on there. You got to make sure it all works out perfectly. And if you look at various groups, you've got the experts that have the perfect picture of what a griddle top should look like. I've learned since then that not every griddle top is going to look the same and not everybody's perfect. I'm certainly not perfect at this, but when it comes to cleaning the griddle top, it took me a long time because I felt like I had to get it perfect. But that's not necessarily the case. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do when I clean up my griddle every time after I'm done cooking. If you caught a very recent video, you saw that I made one of my favorite breakfasts, something we affectionately call slop on this thing. And it is called slop for a reason because it's super messy. It gets all over the place and left a big mess on the griddle top. But I was okay because I intended that because I really wanted to show really basically, well, what I do to clean the griddle. I'm going to go ahead and just show the process that I use. All I'm using are my paper towels, a scraping tool, I've got my oil for afterward and then my water. Now, the first thing I want to do is this this is still really hot. I finished cooking about 30, 45 minutes ago. I can't put my hand right on there, but I can definitely get my hand over it without getting too hot. So it's cooling just to where I want. I like it a little bit hot because it's easier to pull the food up with the scraper. All right, so I wanted to get right in on the griddle top. Now, I didn't, you, I didn't get this side really hot, but it's also not that messy. Just a little bit of surface mess, really. Um, the rest of this is still a little bit hot, so I'm gonna take my scraper, first of all. I'm gonna find anything I can. You can see some of this is still really sticking on. So, what I wanna do is add a little bit of water. And by the way, if it's not hot enough, sometimes I'll get it. I'll turn this back on to create a little bit of steam. Sometimes the water is enough. This is just hot water. Well, this water is gonna make it hot. Since the, since the griddle top is still hot, this is gonna help scrape all this off really nice. Sometimes I need the steam to really pull off a lot. This isn't that bad. So what I need is this water is just actually a little bit hot. You can see it's steaming just a little bit. So this is gonna pull off most of what I need here. Whew. Maybe time to add a new coat of seasoning on. Pulling up some of this here. Get some of that down there. I'll be tossing that here in just a minute. I clean the sides. Now all I'm using this for is to scrape all the hard foods off the top and I want to make sure that I maintain a smooth surface. Now all I'm doing is making sure I'm maintaining a smooth surface. That's the purpose of the scraping. Get the food and anything that's stuck on off. Okay. This is when I use my paper towels. I just grab a couple of them and all I'm doing is kind of cleaning up any of that residual water. I don't want that on there at all. And also the extra, extra food junk that's on here. I don't mind if I pull up some of that oil. I can see where I've got some imperfections that I need to work on on my griddle, that's okay. The best thing about the griddle is it's something that fixes, fixes over time. It will get better and better. I've actually gone as far as re-seasoning over the coat, which I will probably do again. So now the last thing I'm gonna do, all the food is off, so now I'm just gonna oil this. Whew. 
Then again, I've got my rag. So what I did with this rag is I took a kitchen, I have a couple of kitchen rags that I just tore up three or four times, so I've got several of these. And all I'll do is I'll use this, and when I'm done with this, I take this in, throw some dish uh, soap on there, and I just hand scrub it, make sure all the oil's out, and then I set it aside to dry for next time. It only takes about five minutes to do that. Uh, that way I can use this. I have found using paper towels can be very costly. Also, the paper towels leave, leave a lot of lint. I've heard that the blue paper towels, the shop paper towels, work a lot better, leave a lot less lint. The problem with that is with as many paper towels as I go through, that would be a very costly investment. So these rags are reusable and I get virtually no lint from them, which I appreciate. So all I'm doing is just taking and rubbing this last layer in. So this will serve for seasoning, but also to coat for the next time. And I can see I definitely need to re-season this. No worries. It's not a perfect griddle top yet, but it will get there. And we'll bring some more life into this. But that is all I do for cleaning. Except I clean my side shelves, I clean my clean everything else, but that's it. Really simple process. So there it is, all prettied up and ready to be put away. I love putting that last seasoning on there, that last coat of oil to make sure this isn't gonna rust. I fortunately have the hard top on there, but still moisture can get in there. So that's just gonna make sure it doesn't rust up, but it's also ready for the next cook. I don't know why, I've enjoyed cleaning this thing almost as much as I enjoy cooking on it. But I'll clean it up, get the rest of my, my tools put away, and we'll call it a day. But that's it, I hope this helped you. I know, like I said, people have been asking my process for cleaning. That's it, I keep it simple. I use a rag, some paper towels, my oil and water, and my scrape tool. The scrape tool really has proven to be super important in that cleaning process. It scrapes off the surface junk, the food, leftover foods, and really helps me make sure that I've got a smooth surface for next time. Hope this helped you. Again, I know I've had this question before, and it's not science, like, like I've said before. It's kind of like the Bob Ross approach. What works for me may not work for you, but you can turn it into a, a pretty bird or a tree, whatever you want to. But this is the way I do it, and it's worked perfectly for me, and I griddle nearly daily on this thing, and I love it. So hopefully this helps. If it, if it does help you, give it a thumbs up. If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And also, check out our other content, including things that I love to cook on the Blackstone as well. And again, you'll find that what I do might help you at first, and then you might adjust a little bit. I first learned by watching tutorials, and then I adjusted what works for me and how I like to make sure this thing gets really pretty before I close her up for the day. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here. So with that, I bid you adieu. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe.